In the last video, I talked about how to solve one of the uh, challenges to using LLMs within a corporate environment, which is the fact that GPT-4 was only trained on public domain information up until September 2021. So if you have lots of proprietary information sitting within your company's own servers, that is not information that GPT has access to or can answer to. So how do you then use GPT, feed it your, your company's information such that you can use it for your you know, unique tasks within your own company? So this is the, the an illustration of the way that I demonstrated in the last video. If you haven't seen that, I'll link to it right here. So these yellow boxes represent the millions of documents that your company might have. And what you do is you take each of them, split them up into text chunks, and it could be by sentence, by paragraph, by page, and then you feed each chunk into an embedding model. What the embedding model does is to convert chunks of text into a list of numbers, which I explained is called embeddings or um, also called vectors. And so you'd end up with millions of vectors, which represent the meaning of each of these chunks of text, which you can then store in the vector database designed to be optimized for semantic search. Different opters for vector databases. If you want a hosted version, um, Pinecone seems pretty popular. So you do that for all of your knowledge base. You have all of this uh, vector sitting in this database. And so if one of your um, employees come along, they access uh, GPT, asks it a question, GPT can then extract a, a query from that prompt and then feed it into the embedding model to get back a vector that represents the meaning of the query. And so now you can run this against the database, your, your millions of chunks of text to see which chunks of text are the most relevant to answering this uh, question. And so it will out output a, a bun bunch of extracted text um, from your original documents, feed that as raw data into GPT, and then GPT can then have the knowledge to then co complete whatever task that this user asked for. And as you can see from this diagram, there are two key AI models that's involved. One is the LLM, the large language model, so this GPT one here, and the second one is the embedding model. So what's quite interesting here is, you know, we're thinking about dependency on third parties, data security, where your confidential information has to flow to. There aren't that many options for LLMs right now that can perform at the same level as GPT-4. And of course, there's a huge community of people working on better and better open source models. And so eventually, I think we'll see um, either you know, enterprise grade solutions coming out from the likes of Microsoft or Google, um, but also, you know, there might emerge some open source options that you can host yourself. So I think we're still, you know, playing a waiting game on this side. However, on this side, the embedding model, yes, OpenAI does provide an API to, to do exactly this. And in my last video, that was exactly what I used and demonstrated to you. And that option is great for quick prototyping, trying to see how things work. But if I was to build a, a real production version of this, I'd be looking at, you know, what are the alternatives that I have for the embedding model? And the good news is that there are open source embedding models out there which perform as well, if not better, than the open AI one. So you might be thinking, hey, what, what, what are the pros and cons of using open AI API or uh, spinning up my own, putting it on my own servers? Well, there are, you know, many consideration. Two of them would be uh, A is cost. Um, the second one is third party dependency. And I came across this article, I'll put a link in the description as well, from this blog called I Am Not a Robot, which describes this really well. So he tested some of these open source models and you know he talks about the ongoing costs of using OpenAI for to do the embeddings and also the fact that you have to trust OpenAI to keep that model running. Because as you can see from this diagram, even you even when you've done that like big one-off task of converting all of your legacy documents in and then putting it in the vector database on an ongoing basis of course you have new data coming in as well which you can keep feeding this this side but every time someone uses gpt to want to access this information you do also need access to the embedding model to turn the query into the vector to then run that search so on the pricing side if you go to OpenAI's uh, page, you will see that their embedding models prices are here. And the one that everyone uh, is using is called Ada V2. And it's really great that uh, to, to see that the, the costs have really been going down by orders of magnitude. So really Ada V2 is quite affordable. Um, 0 0.0004 per 1000 tokens. Uh, what's, what are tokens? Tokens are basically fragments of words. And one token is roughly equal to 0 0.75 words. So just as a quick you know, reference point, if I look at this annual report, uh, it's got 220 pages, 80,000 words, which equate to around 110,000 tokens. And then if you multiply that through, 
it would cost roughly 0.05 dollars ish to convert a document like this into vectors. And of course, you know, depending on how many documents you have uh, in your existing base and also on an ongoing basis, you can run that, you know, run that calculation yourself. Where do you get the open source models and which one should you choose? I'd like to introduce you to this uh, repository called Hugging Face. It's pretty famous within the machine learning community as being the place to go to, to download uh, open source models that you can then put on your own machine and run. They also have these things called leaderboards. So it'll, it will take you know, all the open source models and also some closed uh, models, proprietary models as well, run them against industry benchmarks, the basic tests to evaluate how good they perform up, uh, along different dimensions. So that's that's here. And they create a rank cable. And they have these leaderboards for different tasks. And so right now we're looking at the text embedding ones. So you can see that the AW2, the open AI one, it's it performs quite well, but it's it's not the best. So there will be other options which perform as well and not better than open AI that you can look into implementing um, for, for your own company. So if we go back to this diagram, yes, the technology is not quite there yet to do all of this in the way that you would want to in an enterprise environment. But what you can do is start building this part. And this part, you can use one of the models that I pointed to just now um, on your own machines. And yes, you're still kind of dependent on uh, OpenAI for this part right now. But I think it's only a matter of time before the likes of Microsoft or Google comes out with uh, hosted enterprise versions or um, open source versions of the LLMs might become good enough such that you can also host your own version. That being said, yes, we're still waiting here. This part in its own right, I think, is a pretty useful thing for any company that uses a lot of natural language assets to, to be building.